Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Beginner's Mind series. Some of you have been regular viewers of this um, uh, program on YouTube as well as on the, the audio on podcast. So if you have the opportunity to sit and sit and watch or either on your mobile phone or on your laptop, you're welcome to you know join us on YouTube. We really appreciate that. In case you want to listen to these inspiring conversations while you're on the move, we welcome you to go to the podcast where you can just download the audio and listen to it while you're driving. Should you be listening to it while you're driving or exercising? I don't know about that because you are going to have a lot of aha moments. So uh, viewer discretion is advised there. <laughs> Today we have a wonderful guest with us. Her, her name is Simi Arora, all the way from the United States, New York. And um, she's a certified life coach, a yoga teacher, a corporate wellness trainer who is dedicated to helping all of you find the truth in your life and to live your life with purpose. That's one of the top requests we get from all of our social media followers. How can I discover the purpose of my life? And she helps you do just that. Her own struggle with mental health issues and her vulnerability, her openly communicating her journey from pain to purpose makes her relatable and trusted by her global audience. Through her collective community of over 150,000 people on social media, her signature monthly training programs and online digital courses, Simi's work is focused on helping people get unstuck from their conditioned minds. I love that because um, a lot of people comment in YouTube videos, etc. I'm feeling stuck in my life. She helps you get unstuck from your conditioned minds, from the mental prisons that you might find yourself in at certain point of time in your life, develop more self-awareness and create a meaningful, happier and stress-free lives. Simi, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's such a pleasure and honor to be talking to you. I admire you, your work, um, and I've been following you very consistently over the years. Uh, in fact, when I just started off and I was uh, Googling some of the coaches and speakers in India, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you were among the top five. So oh, that you. got my attention. And it's such an mm -hmm. honor right now to be talking to you and, of course, discussing about some of the major aspects of our existence, uh, something that we all struggle constantly with yep. and something that we can all strive to get better at. So Definitely. it's a complete honor and privilege Likewise. to be right now. Likewise, Simi, I admire your, I admire your crisp videos on LinkedIn. You po post these short videos, which are very meaningful and very relatable because you're speaking from life experiences, obviously. So, guys, uh, connect with Simi on her LinkedIn profile, and she publishes some amazing content out there. Um, and that's what first brought uh, your profile to our attention because those videos were very relatable, very crisp, and yet had a profound message uh, behind them. Simi, I, I would like to jump uh, right into it in, in you know, adding value to our audiences uh, who've joined us from across the globe here. Um, you speak in your in your introduction, I love that phrase, helping you moved yourself from pain to purpose. And that's what a lot of your work revolves around helping others move from pain to purpose. And I personally know um, a lot of people who are in pain um, due to various reasons, the pain of uncertainty, the pain of confusion, the pain of why me, the pain of um, what's going to happen. You know, so there a lot of people are going through and then other issues as well, you know, whether it's financial challenges or whether it is people who've been hit hard by COVID or lost a loved one during this time. It's been a very hard time the last two years. Um, to speak to us about the subject, please, of moving or con from pain to purpose or converting your pain into purpose. Well, it is such a profound subject and mm -hmm. anything that can be said on this uh, in a short time will not be justified because, uh, as you said, there are so many ways we can get uh, the pain, the experience mm -hmm. of pain. And mm -hmm. how do we know if there is an experience of pain is this restlessness, mm -hmm. unease, mm -hmm. anxiousness, mm -hmm. fears, insecurities. Mm -hmm. It doesn't... Uh, fully mean that you have to be in substantial pain to mm -hmm. really start asking yourself the most important questions. But the subconscious mm -hmm. experiences, the emotional experiences that we incur on a daily basis mm -hmm. be painful. And mm -hmm. the funny thing is that not many of us do realize that we're going through them. Right. And this was my understanding and a very profound revelation as well. 
because mm-hmm. the face of it sometimes it appears that oh you are doing very well you have a great career right. and uh, you know everything is fine there's no such significant issue um, mm-hmm. but internally there are there are certain ways that we are struggling it might not be uh, you know just related to money but it might be related to the the, the self worthiness the impact the sense of contribution sure. so it could be a real pain such as mm-hmm. you're going through a physical health issue mm-hmm. or an emotional pain which in more or less all the cases is invisible mm-hmm. and it's so easy for us to cover up our physical pain you know we can go to the doctors and take yeah. medications we can right. put the ointments on our wounds but mm-hmm. when it comes to emotions we can't even see them right because it's so difficult to sit with your emotions and dig deeper sure. in them and mm-hmm. and you know there are so many distractions out there right now you know mm-hmm. what we do when we are in pain is we go and talk to people we go on social media mm-hmm. we we try to distract ourselves with tons and tons of content that we can now watch on mm-hmm. netflix and amazons yeah and i can tell you that there's nobody on this planet nobody mm-hmm. in this existence who is not experiencing some sort of itch some mm-hmm. sort of pain some sort mm-hmm. of suffering and struggle mm-hmm. um because it's one thing that's constant to everybody and it's so important because right. it is the path to your evolution it is so mm-hmm. yes so in my journey of uh going through various setbacks um starting from childhood trauma that i wasn't even aware that i had that mm-hmm. in my experience it was stored mm-hmm. in my subconscious mind to come mm-hmm. into a new country Mm. completely vulnerable getting married a short mm-hmm. marriage for 9 to 10 months getting mm-hmm. divorced mm-hmm. uh totally broken mentally emotionally uh ab- absolutely asking the question why that and how this could happen to me like i'm such a great person i'm such a right. beautiful nice person how could this happen to me to really uh jumping into the self realization of the fact that everything and anything that is happening to you mm-hmm. and the setback or the challenge has a purpose has a meaning mm-hmm. and as uh, you mentioned clearly that um uh, you know mental health issues is something that not many people understand and i had no idea until i had my first panic attack and right. then consistent panic attacks mm-hmm. and then becoming suicidal and mm-hmm. then having the fear of not being able to face my parents because i just got divorced and it's sort of like a taboo uh, from the culture that we come in from sure. and and you know also considering yourself as a failure so i know right now i'm just talking about a lot of things mm-hmm. together but yes it is a part of my journey and a lot more of course transitioning from you know leaving a secure job in the united states being alone to jumping into creating this business completely alone uh no which, investors which is something we we want to know. talk about in detail as well you know how how you made that transition because um there's a lot of people out there who want to be in a position to help others uh who want to i i think would you agree with that that one of the first steps in helping other people convert their challenges into purpose they convert their pain to purpose um involves in first sorting your own mess out sorting your own challenges out overcoming your own pain and in in the process agreed, you agree agreed mm-hmm. uh yes absolutely it's a process cuz i right now i can't say i'm perfect i'm i am supremely flawed like mm-hmm. all of us are probably mm-hmm. it's just that i heard someone saying that the best quality of a leader or mm-hmm. the most effective leader is the person who can transmit the mm-hmm. belief that if i can do something with mm-hmm. my life you can as well the transmission of the belief mm-hmm. that what is possible for you is what a great leadership so it's wow. not it doesn't mean that we have to get to a journey like how to be a perfect person to be a coach or i have to be at a certain level uh, of my own success to be a coach sure. i think it's more important to be joining the movement of evolution and growth with everybody else you come in forward and say that listen I have the belief that I can make a few changes in my life, tiny bit changes in my life, mm-hmm. and I know that you can do too. And this transmission of the belief in my opinion is what people want because all of us are excellent. I strongly believe that there's nobody on this planet right now who is not excellent, who is not worthy, who is not smart. Mm-hmm. It's just 
the 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 ideas and the notions of the social parameters and economic conditions and the world that we have built we started to feel that we are less than someone else because of various different disparities and this right. belief must be broken mm -hmm. um, and in my all articles wherever whenever i write uh, one thing i always write is that i'm no better than you but if mm -hmm. i can make those small changes i know that you can as well and sure. i know that while they're listening to it there's this truth within them the uh -huh. excellence within them the power within them that shows up and say to them listen yeah she's right i am special there's nobody here who can say that i'm not special you ask mm. anybody you're like special here doesn't mean that you need to have a special quality it's the feeling of your spirit you know this yeah you know this mm -hmm. internally you know your specialness but you have just covered it up with so much of mud and garbage and ideas of the preconceived notions and the story that you've been listening yeah. and a lot of this is coming from the culture or society or parents or you know environment that we are part mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. so so pain to purpose is all about listening to yourself recognizing mm -hmm. that there is a growth path for me that pain is not happening for no reason and mm -hmm. if this pain is there there must be a trigger for that there must be a reason of my this experience and sure. it is not natural for me to be staying here the mm -hmm. most natural thing for me to be doing is to be able to convert this pain mindset into productivity mindset into mm -hmm. power mm -hmm. mindset into mm -hmm. purpose mindset and right. it is possible so that mm -hmm. is where my whole journey personally lies and also the work that I'm doing with um, my audience and my clients. Well, that's great. I love what you said about, um, you know, the understanding that this pain is there for some to spark some sort of inner growth, you know, which is easier said than done. But once we look at it from that perspective, it makes um, a whole lot more sense. Actually, that could be used as an affirmation. I'm special, right? I'm special, guys. We, I'm, this is what we, I would like all of you to do. Take a deep breath in, inhale, and remind yourself you're special. You're special, right? And think of all the ways that you feel that you're special, because you know it. As Simi rightly said, you know it. Deep down, you know it. There are qualities. There are moments when you when you were shining brilliantly. There are moments when you had to step aside and look at yourself. Uh huh. Was that me? <laughs> right. So you've been through those sort of moments, and you just need to stay in touch with those moments. And I, I invite you to type that in into the comments section. Uh, you are special, and I am special, right? And when you meet yeah. someone. To remind them, the, the reason why um, that that phrase slipped from my tongue as your special is because I use that very frequently, Sammy, for audiences to remind each other when I'm doing a live keynote. Um, mm -hmm. I, I saw Les Brown do that in one of his um, yeah. speeches, and I love that. And that's a great way. Turn to the person sitting next to you, look them in the eye, and, and tell them you're special. And in the process of doing that, you hear it back from them as well. So it's a whole crowd saying to each other, as 500 people saying to each other, you're special. And that's wow. a very special moment. And I think we can all have that moment in our lives as well. All, all it just takes is just pause for a little while every now and then. Reflect on your strengths. Reflect on what you're doing well. We are designed, as, uh, that, that's been my observation, Simi, that, that somehow the default design is to spot what's missing. You know, immediately, um, I read about something called the missing tile syndrome. And which which goes something like this. You walk into a room which has 100, 200 tiles, you know, nice tiled floor, beautiful Spanish tiles. And all of a sudden, in one corner, you saw one tile missing. And there you go. Your appreciation now turns to curiosity. And the more you focus on that missing tile, it now turns to why is this missing? Why would they do it? Why would they create such a beautiful floor and then leave out one tile? And all of a one sudden, your, your appreciation for 199 tiles has disappeared and has turned into the focus on what's missing. And I think that happens in our lives on a very frequent basis. I'm also reminded of what uh, Rumi said on the subject of pain. He said, the, the wound is the place where the light enters where you. the light enters. Yeah, and yeah. I love those words. The wound is the place where light enters you. And enters I know you. it sounds beautiful. I know it sounds poetic and philosophical, but I also know people who are going through some kind of mental, spiritual, emotional, physical pain. Um, they have real issues also to deal with. So what I want to uh, 
perhaps decode in this conversation is what are some of the one or two steps as a coach? I mean, the one or two first steps that you could suggest to somebody who's in, let, let's be more specific. So what sort of pain, who's in emotional pain right now? Because as you rightly said, treatments for physical pain are more easily available. There's no taboo around it. I have a headache. There's no taboo around taking an, um, a desprin or an aspirin or whatever happens in whatever part of the world you're in, whatever your over-the-counter uh, medicine happens to be. There's no taboo attached to that. I am feeling low and I'm feeling anxiety and I'm feeling depressed. There is a taboo around in many parts of the world around opening up about that, around getting help. And in the process of not getting help, a lot of people are further um, hampering their chances of recovery are further. And what I also know is that these people who are hurt and who haven't healed themselves, they in turn hurt others as well, knowingly, unknowingly, at a subconscious basis. They, they um, sort of went out that pain in all the wrong directions. So what might be the one or two steps from your experience that you might want to recommend to our viewers, especially those who are in emotional pain right now, Simi? Uh, it is such an important uh, thing to be discussing a lot more. And um, I had been in tremendous emotional pain as I've been talking about my setbacks. Um, I feel that when we are in the pain, mm -hmm. there are so many times when we lose the hope and you lose mm -hmm. uh, our energy, we lose the faith. And situations like anxiety, depression, or any kind of mental health issues, which are, by the way, very much clinical in nature. Mm -hmm. I had been on antidepressants for about two years, mm -hmm. and I openly talk about it. And the reason why it is important to take antidepressants at time is because it can save your life. Mm -hmm. um, there is no doubt for me, and I'm very confident when I'm saying that medication can help lives. If you have debilitating anxiety, if you are suffering from clinical depression, if you can't get out of your bed and do the daily chores, if you feel that anxiety is taking over your life, mm -hmm. please, please, mm -hmm. please take the right prescription, go mm -hmm. to the psychiatrist, take the medication. That is the most important thing if you sure. are having clinical diagnosis of any kind of mental health issue. Right. The reason why that is important at the beginning is because it stabilizes you. Uh -huh. See, what happens, we have to understand that emotional, <clears throat> we are emotional beings. So... My each and every thought is creating a, a, a chemistry in my brain, right? It so is. when I'm thinking positive, there are certain release of chemicals that are going in my body and are uh -huh. generating particular type of feelings. So sure. very normally we see that example, you know, I sound lazy. I start to slouch mm -hmm. immediately. My body goes down, mm -hmm. right? Part of my being lazy immediately gets converted into the body in form of a gesture, a body movement that is mm -hmm. making you feel limited. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, am I energized? Mm -hmm. This thought, what it does, it, op it opens your arms, you know, mm -hmm. it allows you to feel expansive. So sure. your body is responding to the thought. So this is a very small little example. Mm -hmm. Same way when you have thinking going on, let's say you went through a trauma, there's a significant failure. Mm -hmm. uh, you lost money. You lost relationship. You had a heartache. You had a divorce. You went through mm -hmm. shit because mm -hmm. we all do, right? Mm -hmm. Now you recognize that my physical body is experiencing what I am thinking about subconsciously. And because the chemistry that is produced in the mm -hmm. body is a result of the way my neurons are talking to each other. Because sure. the role of the brain is to produce those chemicals that can run your body. Mm -hmm. So number one thing, especially for mental health issues, is to make sure that you take the medication. And trust me, uh, Timur, there are so many people, Simmer, they reach out to me and they ask me this very specific question. Should I take medication? And right. my answer is, if you can't get out of bed, please yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing is healing, which right. is an important part because medication is just a temporary solution for you to fix yourself, become stable, and then make sure that you now go deeper into your being and ask yourself, what is it? Mm -hmm. What is it? Mm -hmm. What is it that I really, I really, really want? Right. So 
first step, as you said, I want to give two steps. Very basic. First step is mm -hmm. no matter where you are right now, whether you're struggling with anxiety, depression, mental health issues, or just acute stress, mm -hmm. I want you to love yourself and embrace yourself and be with yourself and comfort yourself and say to yourself, I love myself mm -hmm. in every way possible. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. love and care for myself, even if I'm experiencing this extreme feeling of fear, sure. of anxiety, or depression. Mm -hmm. I am going to embrace myself on this journey of healing. I am going to embrace myself no matter what. This is me. This is my thing. This is my body. This is my experience. And I love myself no matter what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, when you do that, when you accept yourself in every possible way, a lot of this resistance is gone. Yeah, You're present with your emotion. You're sure. present with your fear. This mm -hmm. is the first and the most important thing because mm -hmm. we're trying to, you know, fix our emotions. We're trying to take calculative measures and exercises and whatnot. But we are not loving ourselves in this process. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. hate ourselves in this process. And mm -hmm. it will never, never do anything to you. There won't be any significant change if you do not accept and love yourself in the situation that you are in at the very mm -hmm. first place. Mm -hmm. Second is self-awareness of your values. So important. So important. Why? Because your top values in your life, when they are compromised, you mm -hmm. are bound to be stressed. You're bound mm -hmm. to be anxious. You're mm -hmm. bound to be living a life that's miserable or right. mediocre. Uh -huh. Your values could be anything. For example, if your value is freedom or mm -hmm. respect, right? And every day in your relationship, you are being disrespected. Mm -hmm. Every day you are in an environment where you don't feel respectful, be it mm -hmm. your workplace, be it your family life, could be mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. Your value is freedom. You want mm -hmm. to do creative things. You want to get out of the house and be who you are. But you have created a, a, a web for of your of your own, you know, relationships and obligations that you feel stuck in it. Mm -hmm. Then you're compromising your value of freedom, and obviously you're gonna feel anxiety because you're not doing what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. Now, why are you not doing what you really want to do? Is another whole science of the mental conditioning. Right. As Tim said before. Conditioning is a real deal. Mm -hmm. Anything and everything that you are right now and experiencing right now is nothing but merely the accumulation of all the experiences that you had in the past. Sure. So if you don't like something that is happening right now, the only thing you need to do is to, to allow yourself to let go of it. Mm -hmm. And which is, which is this whole journey is all about. And while you're in the process of doing that, purpose automatically shows up. Because your purpose is linked with your healing, mm, you know. I like that. Your purpose, purpose is linked, is linked with, with your healing. Okay. Mm. Yeah, because right. when I'm healing myself, I am creating space for myself in my heart to be of service to others, to mm -hmm. be of value to others. If mm -hmm. I do not have the space in my heart, if I don't feel expansive, why would I get up in the morning and think, "Hey, how can I serve?" Right. Right. Impossible. I've got, right. I, could, don't, I don't have any issues of my own to deal with. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know that the limited idea of my, me, mine, it taking away that energy, taking away that power uh, from what is your best quality, what is your best contribution to mm -hmm. the place that I am stuck and the negative emotional experience that I am experiencing right now. Experiences mm -hmm. are just experiences. Right. They are just coming from your thoughts. They are mm -hmm. just coming from the old patterns. That is it. They mm -hmm. do not have any more reality than weight, than the focus and the attention that you're giving it to. Right. And you can train your mind to not give them more attention and more focus than they deserve, right? By, um, and that's wonderful what you said about the, the values. I completely agree with Dan because uh, pain is a signal, especially emotional pain is a signal that you're not living in harmony with your higher self, right? It's like some some sort of um, internal cognitive dissonance some some it's like a machine wherein the parts are fighting against each other imagine a car where the where the engine and the brakes are not in harmony or the the tires and the steering wheel are not in harmony right it's like all parts not functioning towards a cohesive direction and i think emotional pain as you rightly said is also a symptom that somewhere we're not living we're not being true to our values we're not being true to our higher self our authentic self 
we're not being also true to the vision we have of ourselves. That's also something that I believe. So what I often experience is we have this mental image that we, the person that we aspire to be. So if we do a visualization exercise and invite people to just close their eyes for a few seconds and think of the person, the, the, their ideal self, think of the individual they would want to be maybe, you know, ideally in a, fi in a five year, 10 year, six year, three year frame, whatever it happens to be. And then once we compare our current choices with this ideal self, and nobody knows it, but we know there's a huge mismatch that I'm not living according to the values, as you rightly said, that creates a lot of internal pain and confusion. And I think it's also, emotional pain is also, as you observed, an opportunity for course correction, which means what relationships, for example, or what lifestyle choices, or what mindset choices are contributing to this pain right now? So it's, it's sitting in reflection. Maybe if, if I talk about a mindset choice, perhaps a lot of people not living with the mindset of gratitude adds to their emotional pain. They're constantly comparing. Social media is adding yeah. fuel, fuel to the fire. You know, now earlier we used to compare ourselves with the four or five people that uh, in, in the neighborhood. And now thanks to these <laughs> mobile phones, it's who's bought that card of old classmate of mine who lives in the other part of the world has bought a new Ferrari or whatever it happens to be. And then I'm driving my old beat up Toyota, right? <laughs> What's going wrong here, right? Or um, some somebody taking an exotic look, uh, vacation in Costa Rica or Dubai or elsewhere. Look at me, poor me. I'm just, I just have to dress up and sit in my morning metro ride and show up at work at 9 a.m. And that's <laughs> fueling this, this, this pain. Is, I, I love what you're saying. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I no, no, really please. wanted to make this a point that uh -huh. this is what I was talking about, the lack of self-worthiness. Mm -hmm. And lack of self-worthiness cannot come in mm -hmm. your experience mm -hmm. when you don't know your value. Mm -hmm. You can wear the, the most expensive watch in your hand right you can wear all the gucci's and fendi's the world uh -huh. you cannot have the self-worthiness if you do not find yourself right. valuable that you watch is not going to give it to you the, things yeah the self-worthiness can come even if you do not have any kind of money in your bank but mm -hmm. you do have the opportunity to show your brilliance your mm -hmm. light and mm -hmm. your presence and try and just making a difference in someone's life is maybe just bringing a smile on their face. Absolutely. That itself is big enough for you to feel self-worthy. Uh -huh. And if you are feeling the sense of self-worthiness, the chances are that you're already on purpose. Because see, um, somebody asked me, um, what is the most overrated word? I say passion and purpose. <laughs> and the reason, even if I'm, I talk about purpose a lot, like I talk about purpose, but here I'm not talking in terms of doing something so big and it has to be a cause it has to be a mission it could be the smallest thing that you do but you do with your full attention mm -hmm. you do with your full engagement mm -hmm. you do with your full experience you right. are able to live the life in its fullness uh -huh. that is the only purpose yep. you have now there are ways we can do that mm -hmm. if a doctor is a um, is a great doctor, right? He he has a great skill set. And while he's dealing with a patient, he's bringing his fullness up front. He's mm -hmm. bringing his intention up front and he's able to serve. That is his purpose, mm -hmm. right? So same way if you're a carpenter, you're a plumber, you're a mechanic, you have different talent. I mean, I, I'll be the worst mechanic in the world. Mm. I, I, I don't even know how to change the tires of the car. I freak out. I might be a great speaker. I might be a great coach, but there are so many things I don't know how to do. Right. Right. So, so I can't be everything, but I can mm -hmm. be something that I'm really mm -hmm. good at. Mm -hmm. And I think while we are on the journey of doing that small action every day that gives me the joy and fulfillment and sense of connection with life, connection with people, right. connection with the totality of mm -hmm. the experience mm -hmm. and oneness of this universe, mm -hmm. I am on purpose. That's what purpose is about. 
That's beautiful. And that is where the first step is, guys. For all of you waiting for the first step towards purpose, be good at whatever you're doing today, whatever it happens to be, whatever your chosen profession happens to be, whether you like it or not. And I always say uh, there's no happily ever after as far as a job or career is concerned. There will always be things that you'll have to work on, always be aspects that you dislike, that you would you know, want to wish them away, but they, they are there. And so I think that's a wonderful first step, Simi, uh, which you just mentioned, is uh, be good at whatever you do, and that's going to immensely add to your self-confidence, to your value of self. Not that it has to, not that it has to, mm-hmm. not that your sense of self-worth has to come from a job well done, but if you're in confusion, if you're feeling empty right now, that could be a very pos- a, a potential source of uh, joy and satisfaction of a job well done, regardless of your chosen profession. And I want to circle back to what you said about the the watch. You know, uh, no expensive watch. There's this interesting anecdote I read in the Tribune, which is a popular newspaper, English daily here in North India. Mm. And it went some. It was they were talking about the sale of luxury items and. Um, because you mentioned that no watch can make you feel confident or no, none of those fashion labels. The, it happened to be that a dad, uh, father with his young son walked into one of the most expensive, these guys, you know, they sell jewelry and expensive foreign watches, et cetera, et cetera. And he said, um, I want to buy that watch that costs uh, 10 lakh rupees, which is, what, 20,000 US dollars or something, something like that. So, you know, the jeweler very happy to, to show him around and to tell him the different options that were there and for him to buy. And then when they started off the conversation, he said, I'll tell you what the real reason why I want to buy this expensive watch. Kakaji has just bought, I've just bought him a BMW 7 Series. Mm. He said, great. And, but the, here's the challenge. The, the, you know, when he walks inside to a bill, obviously he has to leave the car outside in the parking lot, right? Yeah. I want something mm-hmm. on him that also <laughs> carries the status uh, of uh, the, the, you know, how important this guy is or which family he comes from. I want something on him. And that's why I want to buy him a watch because the, the BMW 7 Series has to be outside in the parking lot. And I'm thinking, uh, I, I laughed to myself when I, when I saw that, uh, when I read that in the paper because it's so relatable. There are so many people out there who are trying to fulfill this void through consumerism, through labels or through external things and they don't succeed because it's temporary. We spoke to a wonderful gentleman on minimalism, Joshua Becker. He's a leading global authority on the subject of leading a minimalist lifestyle. And I've been so impressed by that philosophy that I've been able to get rid of a lot of stuff, except my perfumes, of course, I'm a perfume collector. So (laughs) I'll get there someday, I'll get there. Thanks, Joshua, for starting this line of thought that you do not need stuff to prove your worth. You do not need to fit in to prove your worth. You do not need to live up to the expectations of other people to prove your worth, because that's a trap they've laid out for you. And if you walk into it, There you go. You'll spend the rest of your life trying to live up to their expectations. And guess what? There'll always be somebody ahead of you. There'll always be somebody who's wearing, carrying a more expensive handbag. There'll always be somebody who's uh, driving a more expensive car, right? So, and then in the process of this, you're losing out on life. You're losing the gift that you have to raise your vibrations. It's uh, again Rumi, uh, the Sufi master Rumi, who said, uh, take sips of this pure wine. Take Mm -hmm. sips of this pure wine. Don't mind it's been given to you in a dirty cup. Take sips of this pure wine. And the pure wine is the joy of the little things of Mm -hmm. life, the joy of gratitude, which comes in a dirty cup. And the dirty cup is our life with all its challenges, with all the frivolous daily stuff that we have to attend to, that we have to look after. But in this dirty cup, we, can, we have the pure wine and we can take sips of it every day. And that's through gratitude. That is through appreciation of the small things. I lost a dear friend, uh, Simi, uh, by suicide uh, in January this year. And you know, for there's not a day that's gone by since January that I haven't thought of him. Uh, we were childhood buddies, we were classmates. And I would think to myself, you know, having my morning coffee or putting on my favorite perfume, I said, 
for a moment, why, why didn't he pause and think about the little joys of life? You know, I know there were big challenges. I know there were big challenges. I know there was pain in his life that only he could fathom. Perhaps he couldn't fathom it either. Nobody else knew about it. But I know he was struggling with issues, of, uh, right? Um, I know he decided not to talk about them. But I also know, I mean, I, this question occurred to me every single day. Why didn't he just simply get in touch with the simple everyday pleasures of life? The early morning, the you know, putting on your perfume, the having a sip of your favorite coffee, the spending time with your pets and things like that. And the reason uh, sim uh, simmer sometimes it happens is uh, as, an, as the first hand experiencer of this situation where I had the bouts of hopelessness. Um, we need to also understand that when we are experiencing a mental health issue, mm -hmm. uh, it is it is um, very difficult for a person to really connect with life itself mm -hmm. uh, because the chemicals, those are disturbed in the body and mind right. are pulling this person into a state of mind where hopelessness has no escape. Mm -hmm. There is no way mm -hmm. uh, you can get out of it. You don't yep. trust anybody who can help mm -hmm. you get out of it. Mm -hmm. When you stop trusting your own mind and you feel mm -hmm. that your mind has turned as an enemy, the mm -hmm. reality is that your mind has turned your enemy. That's why you want to mm -hmm. take your life because you right. don't see any hope. It's unbearable. Um, mm -hmm. It's unbearable. It's just something that uh, I did have those experiences. So it's something that you just know, don't know how what to do with. Because, mm -hmm. um, and I think we definitely, you know, need to be speaking a lot more about it, especially in uh, my homeland, in our country, India, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is the reason why, because people still feel that, oh, they're just so bad, it's going to be okay, or yeah. he's just quite type of a guy, or, mm -hmm. you know, so things of that nature where uh, we don't take the gravity of the situation into Correct. account. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fact is that, if we have a grateful heart in the very beginning, we will not end being there. Mm. And we need to know that the trauma and the emotional distress or the pain that we are going through, we are not alone. We are all somewhere on our journey of mm -hmm. evolution. Mm -hmm. Someone has gone a little further in the journey. They are able to establish themselves. They are able to produce value, give to others. Or Some sort of their own problems. And mm -hmm. are coming forward. Some right. of us, and the reason why I need to do the work I do and you need to do the work that you do is for the people who need a hand that they can hold and get up. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started out, it wasn't an idea for me to make money out of it because I was making a lot of money. I'm an MBA. I was working with a large firm. Uh, you know, in fact, transitioning into business made me bankrupt in the first mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fact that because I didn't know how to package myself, I was in a new country, I had zero network, I couldn't hire people because it's so expensive to hire people in the United States than in anywhere else, probably. Uh, so it was so the reason why I did this was because I knew if I'm not going to say it, one, I'm never going to be able to say my truth. This mm -hmm. is the time for me to exist. And mm -hmm. I am going to say my story. Mm hmm. However bad that is, this is just like, you know, the space, this universe is, uh, is a, is, is a, you know, rich soil where mm -hmm. you're sowing the seeds of your intentions and they're going to show up in beautiful, uh, garden of flowers or mm. lovely, uh, you know, landscape of trees or whatever, but sure. your intentions are what are producing your quality of life. So uh -huh. my intention was at that moment, just to talk about it just to overcome my fear of uh, being ashamed of my setbacks. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to say in front of my parents that, listen, you don't have to be ashamed if I'm divorced. It's fine. It just happened. I'm alive. I'm healthy. I'm supremely intelligent. I can make things happen for myself. You should not be ashamed of the fact that I got divorced. Mm -hmm. And I am going to say about it because it is the reality. <clears throat> and if mm -hmm. I'm not going to say the truth, then the rest of us are never going to be able to you know, take this inspiration from each other and say the truth. It's sure. okay. It's just, yeah. it's just an incident, an experience of life, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, our purpose involves, never involves us predominantly. It involves sharing a journey of some kind with everybody else because the separated ones suffer. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. If I think that I am the one that exists, I am the one who has to make money, I am the one who has to be happy, the mm -hmm. chances are you can find yourself most miserable because there is never a success. If there's nobody who's going to be my audience and listen to what I have to say, how can I ever, ever be successful? Mm -hmm. If Simmerji's videos are not watched by others and appreciated by others, where is success? Mm -hmm. Right. I love what success. you said. It's the separated ones who, what was that phrase you just suffer. said? Who suffer. It's the separated ones who suffer. I love that. And therein lies your responsibility or your duty to yourself is to ask for help, is to reach out for help. Don't try to figure it out all on your by yourself. Don't experiment with self-medication or all of these things. Uh, and as you rightly said, Sammy, thank you for bringing that up. And thank you for that extra emphasis on this thing on getting help, get professional help, guys. If depression is real, it's not just feeling low. There's, there's a distinction there, as Simi defined earlier, but if you're finding it hard to cope with your daily duties or get out of bed and feel really empty or suicidal, get professional help. There's no taboo in that. You're going through real emotional pain. Go see somebody who's qualified to assist you, who has the right you know, uh, qualifications to assist you, get the right medication, don't do self-medication. A lot of people tend to do that. A lot of people just tend to brush it under the carpet. Hair in India is often just ignore it. It's just you're feeling low. Feeling low and de feeling depressed are different, right? Get help, that was number one. And reach out, This is here's another issue here. So what are the chances that somebody else is going to figure out that you're going through something major inside your head? Right, number one, everybody's so busy with their own stuff. So what are the chances somebody in your friends or family is actually going to decode? Ah, this is what's happening inside his head or her head. Very slim. Even if they do figure out, what are the chances they're going to give you the right resources or the right pathway forward or the right medication? So I think the onus partly is just as in a headache or a fracture or an allergy or whatever it happens to be, the onus is again on me to also... Um, reach out for help from the right uh, persons. And I'm so glad you brought that up because that is often ignored, overlooked, underestimated. The gravity of that is underestimated. The result is in India, we have a silent uh, uh, pandemic of depression as well. Uh, we have one of the highest youth suicide uh, rates in the world, partly fueled by our aggressive, hyper-aggressive competitive drive in the competitive examinations, etc. The youngsters who are willing to take their lives if they don't do well in a certain examination. And I think we all need to self-reflect as parents, as educators, as members of the society. We need to self-reflect why is that we have created a culture where some young person deems it fit to take her own life if she didn't score what she wanted to score on a certain exam. We need to self-reflect. Yeah, it, it has to start from the families. Um, mm -hmm. You see, we all need to know, like we're, we're all who are people who are listening to this podcast or watching the video, listen, man or a woman, you're gonna die one day, mm. right? Mm. This is the reality. You have come with an expiry date. You're not here forever. Mm -hmm. None of us are, right? Mm -hmm. We're mortals. At right. least in this physical body and mind we are. Uh, I'm sure the spirit eternal flame exists, mm. but this body is, is for here for, for a while. Mm -hmm. So yes, I mean, let's make the best out of it. Can we just do mm. that? Can we just do this commitment? Listen, I'm anyways going to die. Like mm. the day I was born, I'm actually going close to my, my graveyard. Mm -hmm. So this is a reality. So mm -hmm. I, I want to better live before I die because time is limited. Right. Yep. So this is a reminder, honestly, uh, Simmer, I give to myself every day. It's like, man, like a, one day is God, right? Mm -hmm. I hope I made the best out of it. Because the fact that we don't talk about death and we don't want to talk about death because we think it's a scary subject to talk mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. I think it's a great perspective. It's an eye opener. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's an alarm that should ring in your body, uh, in your mind, at least once a day. And it's like going to a it's like going to a nice vacation. Let's say you're in the Maldives, uh, staying at the Ritz Carlton. You booked the place for seven nights, and you wouldn't waste. You know, you have to take a flight back and go back to your other things after the seven days stay is over. So you you want to make the best out of those seven days, right? You want to. You wouldn't waste time sitting indoors. You want to be out there and do things that you're supposed to do while you're in uh, you're in a resort like that, right? And um, 
I don't know who said this, but I said we are not human beings having uh, kind of physical. physical experience. No, experience, we, we are spiritual we are beings, beings having a temporary human, human, human experience. experience. Right? We are not human beings who need to search for a spiritual experience. It's the other way around. We are spiritual beings having a temporary human experience. So if this is a temporary human experience, first of all, uh, I know it's easier said than done, but may I urge my audience to not take it so very seriously. It's not meant to be taken so seriously. And most of us, we end up doing just that. Oh, I want to plan <laughs> this. I want to plan this for my kids. I'm not even married yet, but I want to plan this for my kids. Just slow down, man. Slow down. It's, it's, it's what the Chinese, they have this proverb. When men make plans, the gods laugh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like God is Michael laughing has. down there. Go on, buddy. Go Michael. on. Right. Go on. Keep dreaming. And I know what was going to unfold for you. Right. Because, so uh, the, the, uh, in spiritual context, um, you know, whenever we read uh, Geet Bhagavad Gita or any uh, beautiful scriptures, one of the things mm -hmm. that comes again and again is this Maya, the illusion of mm -hmm. this world. And the fact that it's a playground of different mm -hmm. roles that we are fulfilling mm. and the fact that it is meant, it was created to be, to, to just have a playful experience. And mm. what we made out of it is, is a uh, total of our own creation right. uh, by just creating uh, so much of, um, you know, this barriers of, mm -hmm. of holding us mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. our own being and not yep. being able to give space to expand. So um, I feel that when we allow ourselves to be playful, to mm. be present, to be joyful, you know, we will have so much of more capacity to work hard, yeah. so much of more energy to be productive, so mm -hmm. much of more to give to the world, so much of mm -hmm. more fame, energy, momentum will show up and all mm -hmm. the things that you really want. I mean, I know you want money. Mm -hmm. I know you want success. I know you want to be famous. I know that you want people to love you. This all begins with you. Mm -hmm. You love yourself, you expand yourself, you you find yourself experiencing joyfulness in your heart. Sure. You see that everything is just gonna come right there mm. yeah. at your doorstep. It will. It will if you if you set your mind right, you know, everything else falls into place. And I think it's the is the thinking we need to work on. Um uh, and I think it's also very important what I've been practicing lately, um, thanks to that conversation with Joshua Becker, um, is to declutter. Guys, listen, you don't have to conform to anybody else's list, right? You don't need to buy the latest iPhone, whatever, 14, 15, 16, it happens to be. You don't need to. That's how that company is sitting on trillions of dollars of cash. Nothing against Apple. You know, they've been one of my clients. Uh, but and, Or for any other corporation for that matter. Nothing against them. That's how they are going to ensure their, perpetuate their success, right? And do more of what they're already doing, innovating, creating new, exciting things. But you don't have to unless you need to. And this is yeah. how, how far are you going to go? And once you declutter, once you say, okay, I don't need to do that. I don't need to have that uh, or in order to feel. And once you reduce your, this list of need tos, you suddenly find there's more space. And when there's more space, there's time to, uh, then pause and slow down. And again, Rumi, this morning is <laughs> dedicated to Rumi. He said, uh, Rumi. no, no, not Rumi. In fact, this is Khalil Gibran, Khalil Gibran, the mm. Lebanese American poet. And he said, he said this, he said, they laugh at me because I will not sell my days for gold. Yep. They laugh at me because I will not sell my days for gold. And I laugh at them because they think my days have a price. Wow. Uh, isn't that beautiful? I is, laugh at them. Is it from? A book prophet yeah yeah i think so yeah one of uh, maybe from the prophet or sand or fo sand and foam is one of his other writings but khalil gibran definitely he said they laugh awesome. at me such a, such a deep philosophy yeah. and learning they, learning as well absolutely if you refuse to be a part of the consumer materialistic focused culture people are going to laugh at you oh, look at this guy right or why wouldn't you why wouldn't you you have a, a tribe of 1.8 million followers why wouldn't you do this 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 you can make a lot more money like like that right? i said well you know i'm i'm having a good time right i'm having a good time doing what i'm doing and uh, yeah. people are going to laugh at it ah uh, doesn't lacks the business sense or you know wasn't able to capitalize on his popularity etc cetera, etc cetera. 
you know, they laugh at me because I will not sell my days at, for gold. And I laugh at them because they think my days have a price. Your days cannot, you can't put a price tag on them. So make Absolutely. every single one of them count. Simi, it's, such be, it's been such a wonderful experience here. You've been very open, sharing your wisdom freely. Before we let you go, um, two things. A, I'm sure a lot of viewers want to reach out to you for personal coaching sessions or you know, to book you for speaking engagements, etc. cetera. Uh, how do they go, go about doing that? And, you know, tell us about what's the best resource on the internet to look for your videos and your podcasts and other material. That's one. Um, and parting words of wisdom for, for to, as a reward, as a special gift to people who have um, been watching this video all the way toward till the, till the end. Well, firstly, if you are trying to reach out to me for personal coaching, one of the best ways to go is to go to the website, which is semiaurora.com. Um, or if you want to me to be, uh, you know, joining your corporation or uh, be a part of your keynote speaking, mm -hmm. uh, you can reach out to my team at contact at semiaurora.com. Uh, I'm pretty much everywhere. I am uh, going to be a lot more consistent with my Instagram. Uh, YouTube, but one of the fundamental place where I put a lot of content is on LinkedIn. Uh, so again, semi Aurora, quite easy for me to, uh, for you to find me. Mm -hmm. And um, the words of wisdom, I think you portray it so much better than me, Simmer. Oh no, 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 you have uh, it. You, know, I, I, you have the poetic flair, you know. I Thank am you. more of uh, just trying to you know put words together. No, uh, sure. But guys, uh, the most important thing that I want you to know right now this moment is that this is your moment of existence mm -hmm. right now you exist mm -hmm. you're here you're alive mm -hmm. and that is the most important thing mm -hmm. and what you're going to do right now when you're alive is mm -hmm. what is going to create your destiny absolutely each and every single thought that you're thinking right now is, mm -hmm. is creating a certain action and each and every action is creating your destiny. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you're present right now, I don't yeah. want you to take this for granted. You are present. Mm -hmm. Just know this. You're mm -hmm. present. Mm -hmm. It's real. Yeah. It's not a dream. It's happening. Mm -hmm. It's right mm -hmm. here. This moment is inevitable. And this experience and this mindfulness of being alive and being present and being able to connect with the moment and do your best is more than enough. There's nothing else you need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Just Thank being you. present. Just being present, guys. I think that's, that's an important takeaway there. As always, I encourage you to type in the takeaways uh, in the comment section. As always, I encourage you to take notes. As always, I encourage you to sit down with a pen and paper and figure out your first few steps. You know, that's the point of learning. What, unless you put it into action, you won't be able to internalize it. So figure out what might be the first few steps. So if Simi's talked about being in the moment, could you practice meditation to do more of that? If uh, we've talked about gratitude earlier, could you start writing a gratitude? Write your journal, simple steps. Uh, unless you don't take them, it just becomes additional information, which was a nice, pleasant experience. Of course, it is with the wonderful Simi Rora with us today. But until you internalize it, until you take the first few steps, you won't be able to um, cross that bridge. The second thing I will encourage all of you to do is um, we, we see a, a community building up in the comment section. We see a lot of people helping each other uh, in the comment section of our YouTube channel. I encourage you to do more of that. You know, doing you, you are doing a great service to your fellow human beings who might be at a different point in their personal evolution and if you reach out to someone and help that's always great Simi with your permission I want to read out a few lines uh, from Javed uh, Akhtar uh, from one of his uh, songs I love your poems anything thank from you. you is very welcome thank you so <laughs> this is coming from Javed Akhtar Saab uh, and um, it's titled Dil Akhir Tu Kyu Rota Hai Dil Akhir Tu Kyu Rota Hai Dunia Mein Yu Hi Hota Hai <laughs> Jab Jab Gam Ka Saya Leheraya जब जब गम का साया लहराया जब आंसू पलकों तक आया जब ये तन्हा दिल घबराया हमने दिल को ये समझाया दिल आखिर तू क्यों रोता है दिल आखिर तू क्यों रोता है दुनिया में यूं ही होता है ये जो गहरे सन्नाटे हैं ये जो गहरे सन्नाटे हैं वक्त ने सभी को बांटे थोड़ा गम है सबका किस्सा 
थोड़ा गम है सब का किस्सा थोड़ी धूप है सब का हिस्सा आंख तेरी बेकार ही नम है आंख तेरी बेकार ही नम है हर पल एक नया मौसम है क्यों तू ऐसे पल खोता है क्यों तू ऐसे पल खोता है दिल आखिर तू क्यों रोता है दिल आखिर तू क्यों रोता है Simi, it's been a, a real pleasure um, having you here on this show, having this conversation centered around helping people find their purpose and converting their uh, pain to purpose. And so we are once again very grateful to you. Um, and guys, please keep in touch with these um, with these conversations here on our channel as well as the wonderful content that our beautiful guest today is also producing. Go reach out to her on on her social media handles as well. You'll find all the links in the description below. And I also take this opportunity to thank my amazing team, whether they are working remotely or here in the office. Without whose contribution, we would not be able to pull off these um, interviews and these conversations. at such a speed that we uh, managed to so i thank my team as well and thank our wonderful guest uh, today as well simi thank you thank you so much for having me on the show it was indeed a great pleasure i learned a lot today and i'm sure this conversation that we have had uh, the effect and the impact is going to go to millions of people around the world and everybody should be able to share us a lot more so that we can create a community of mental strength mm-hmm. emotional vulnerability but at the same time this real experience of life with our presence and mm-hmm. purpose thank you so very too. much i hope so too thank you